This also represents the end of the decade, so I thought we'd break away for a minute and go back and look at the last 10 years, which is virtually impossible when it comes to Hot Wheels. So I thought I would break it down, simplify it as much as I can, try and hit on some of the high notes of the last, and a low note for that, for that matter, of the last 10 years for Hot Wheels. Things have changed so much over the last 10 years. And I thought instead of trying to review all of it, I would pick some of the more definitive models of the last 10 years. Those that collectors probably remember, especially if you've been collecting this long. And I would use those to define some of the most significant developments over the last decade. Does that make sense? Let's do it. This video is going to culminate in my choice of the three most definitive models of the last decade. The models of the decade, if you will. I'll go with the number one, number two, and number three. I bet you can predict them, but see if you can as we move to it. I've got a bunch of models here. As you go through them, you can see a lot of highlights from the last 10 years. You're going to have a million other ideas of models that you think should be a part of this group. Uh, you should leave that comment down below if you do. In fact, as you watch this, you're going to disagree with me on a lot. You might agree with me with some of it too, but let me know. Let those that read, let those at Mattel who read the comments know what you think uh, best and worst, all of the uh, all of the good things, all the things you didn't like from the last 10 years. But change has been the one constant. We have seen so much evolve from a Hot Wheels collector standpoint over the last 10 years. And I think using some of these models to showcase some of those is the best way to do it. So I'm not going to show everything here, but I'm going to pick out a few that I think define the last 10 years, and we start with this one. This one, as far as I know, wasn't even released in the last 10 years. I think it was released in the aughts, maybe 2009, 2008, something like that. It is the Chevy Silverado from the RLC in antifreeze green, but I picked this one out for a couple reasons. We've seen the RLC go through all kinds of ups and downs, no reason to review all of that, but this I picked because A, it's a fantastic, and it's a model that was popular when it was first released, but the Chevy Silverado has become one of the most sought after castings. There's a handful of those that no matter where they're released, whether it be a five pack or a special Walmart release or RLC or Super Treasure Hunt, you no matter what, they're going to be the must haves of the year. One of them. Silverado is one of those. And uh, I chose that one. I think that that's the definitive 83 Silverado is the RLC version. Um, just really representing that as one of the castings of the decade. Next one. Another casting of the decade, 83 Silverado, and then the 510 Wagon. We'll get more into the 510 Wagon as we go. But I would say this was also the super treasure hunt of the last decade, probably the most sought after, one of the most collectible, one of those that uh, collectors really want and still want. It commands a hefty price, too. We saw this released in 2014. It was the final super treasure hunt of the year. And uh, yeah, it was wanted uh, for sure. Now, this one can also represent the emergence of JDM for sure. It can represent uh, June Amai. This is based on his wagon. The deco is, uh, is based on the on the deco that he had on his wagon. And I would definitely call June the decade or the uh, designer of the decade. Uh, he came and went actually. Uh, he came in in the in the aughts, and he's also left this decade. But he left his mark. That is for sure. Another one. These were all models, actually, that I'm going through that I considered to be part of my top three uh, models of the decade. But all of them represent something, but they didn't quite make the cut when it comes to the top three. Um, but they all represent something. And this was maybe the 
one of the later releases that I consider. This is the RWB Porsche 930. What does it represent? Well, a lot of things. Number one, car culture, a big development for the year. Number two, RWB, not only RWB as a brand, but these kind of collaborations. We've seen Pandem come into Hot Wheels, and I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Just the massive meshing of car culture, real car culture, and Hot Wheels culture. And seeing an RWB Porsche is one of those things that could only have come this decade um, from the Hot Wheels line. We see such a, this is such a cool car, represents kind of where car, car culture is right now. And uh, I have to say that this one, uh, late emerger, but uh, easily one of the models of the decade or co- candidates for model of the decade. It all re- also represents the emergence of Porsche this decade. We've always seen Porsches as, as Hot Wheels cars, but more so this year than ever. Another one I considered because it was a popular super treasure hunt um, commands a hefty price now, but most importantly, the, the Ferrari 599XX Super Treasure Hunt represents one of the low points of the decade, and that was Hot Wheels losing Ferrari as a license. Ferrari was a mainstay for Hot Wheels for so long. Every year, a five-pack, we'd see it in premium, we'd see the Ferrari Racers line, we saw so many cool things, and then it just went away. Really sad to see that. We've seen Ferrari emerge elsewhere. Tommy Limited Vintage be an example, which has been fantastic. But seeing Hot Wheels lose Ferrari was always a sad deal. Next one. I seriously considered putting this one in the top three. It is the Nissan 180SX Type X. And you might think, well, John, that was just a basic model. Yeah, it was. But it also, to me, represents not only an emergence, emerging trend this decade, but something that we're going to move into next decade. And that's 90s era models coming in. We've seen more and more the last couple of years. This was the, the one that I think was really the most significant um, bomb when it dropped a few years ago. And we've seen it in, in other lines since, but this first edition, but a 90s era car that you could just see the newer collectors coming in going, Uh Uh-huh, I'm into this. We've seen Civics now, all that kind of thing. Uh, BMW E30s emerge. 90s era cars are going to be a big thing because those of us that grew up on 90s era cars are all collecting now as adults. And those are going to be our superstar cars that maybe the muscle cars were for so many collectors generation before. You know, that grew up in the 60s and the 70s. I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. And those cars are, are, are my style, and then definitely those that are younger than me. I'm no, uh, I'm no spring chicken, we'll put it that way. Um, but I thought that was one. I put in the Supreme E30 because it is the E30, another 90s era car, but Supreme was significant. We saw Period Correct, we saw Illust, we've seen uh, Antisocial Social Club come in. I love these high-end, hype beast type brand collaborations that Hot Wheels is doing. Where Hot Wheels is going, I think, Collecting Hot Wheels, I think, I think, is going to become cooler and cooler and cooler among the car community, among art, uh, art and style aficionados. I just see that emerging, and I picked out that Supreme car as a representative of that. I picked out the RX-3 for several reasons, but most significantly, the emergence of car culture. I think there were four major developments um, in, uh, in this decade for Hot Wheels. One... JDM. Two, car culture. We'll get into the third and the fourth here in a little bit, but this represents both. Not only this was, was this the first model released, the first new model released in car culture in the very first mix, Japan Historics, but we saw the four spoke wheels released here on this model for the first time, which are very much JDM. The RX3 was a little bit more of an obscure casting. We'll get into that. But JDM or Japanese cars were mainly, you know, some, some Nissans, some Toyotas, some Hondas, but then all of a sudden we go deep into like a Mazda RX-3. We'll get to more in a little bit, but uh, that was a big deal. We've seen JDM emerge in a big way this this decade. In fact, it's probably been the most simple terms for Hot Wheels. The last decade was muscle. This decade was JDM. Next decade, I think Euro. We'll get to that in a second. But this also represents car culture. I think car culture was definitely easily the most significant line for this decade, and it's still going strong going into its fifth year. And I think the Mazda RX-3 
It's just a good representation of everything that car culture has become. Skip over a couple there. Toyota Supra, one reason and one reason only. This was in the first release, the first special Walmart exclusive Fast and Furious release. The Fast and Furious film franchise became a big, big deal this decade. It went from kind of a niche, uh, a niche kind of a movie to a major mega hit along the lines of Star Wars in terms of uh, the kind and Marvel in terms of the hype among these these uh, these movies and a, and a natural meshing with Hot Wheels was inevitable, and here it is. This Supra obviously is part of many, many Fast and Furious uh, models, culminating with the premium line release this year, and I think the Supra represents that well. I had to pick out this one. I think this is one of the best models of the year, or of the decade. I think it's one of the coolest. The, the TV Batmobile was first introduced last decade, but has always been a big hit. And I think that uh, this Ghost Flame Zamac to me, is the best release they did. They also released a Super Treasure Hunt that same year. But I put this one in because the Zamax were a big, big deal this year as well. Walmart store exclusives, we've seen them from Kmart, from um, the Kroger stores, and from Target with the Red Editions. But the Zamax, I think, continue to be the big hit, be the best uh, store exclusive line. To me, by far, taking these decos and just going full raw, there's so many good Zamax, and there's such a good cross-section of so many Hot Wheels basic releases but this Ghost Flame Batmobile, to me, uh, represents how cool the Zamax have been throughout the last few years. The last ones that I consider the most significant, most definitive models of the year, or of the last decade, this is the Silvia S15 for several reasons. JDM for sure. This was a JDM car. Um, 90s era for sure. Um, and just, again, just this, this new kind of realm of where Hot Wheels is going. This has been a popular casting. We've seen it release, what, two or three times? Fast and Furious for sure. This one was a Forza exclusive, the first edition. And then In Car Culture in that beautiful pure white edition that I have there in the back. I think that one has been a definitive model. And the last two, I'll put them together. JDM being the most significant development. The other two being Fast and Furious. And we'll get to the last one in just a second. But these two models right here, the Nissan Laurel, the Pig Butt Laurel, you'd like to some call it, and then the Hakoska Wagon, the Skyline Hakoska Wagon, to me represent where JDM went. We went from Datsun 510 peg warmers the last decade, muscle cars being gobbled up, to only JDM, JDM specific cars like the Laurel and the Hakoska Wagon, being released in premium lines and being the most popular cars in that lineup. It is absolutely bonkers that in the last 10 years that has developed. I think that is totally in line with where car culture has gone. It's totally in line with the generations growing up and getting into the cars that they were into as kids and then collecting as adults as Hot Wheels and collecting these real cars as well. And seeing a Hakoska wagon and a Laurel is just beyond crazy that that happened over the 10 years. And there's so many other cars that represent that as well. We have a Sunny and a Sylvia coming up. We have the C210 Skyline. It's just been amazing to watch. Those are the cars I considered. But what were the top three? You have to have figured them out. A, I skipped over them. But B, you probably had it before I, before, you probably had to figure it out before I even, or before I even started this video. So my number three most definitive model of the last decade is actually a tie. And it's a natural, logical tie. It's these two. The Vintage Racing Peter Brock BRE John Morton number 46 Datsun 510. And the same model done for RLC. First one was released in 2011. The next one, I believe, in 2013. Not only do they represent the emergence of JDM, they're technically not JDM cars, not only do they represent the RLC, which was a big deal for good and for bad in the, in the last decade, but they also represent the phenomenon that was BRE, number 46, Datsun 510s, 240Zs, Team Transport, uh, number 35 from the car culture range. BRE was a thing and still is a thing. We've seen it stretch into other brands. The BRE models are desired by collectors. They've kind of taken on a life of their own. It's probably more so than just the popularity of BRE. BRE was obviously Peter Brock 
uh, Enterprises was uh, Brock Racing Enterprises and Peter Brock were known among the racing community and along some car collectors, but not the way it has kind of taken on a life of its own for Hot Wheels collectors. And a Peter Brock autograph on a car means a lot. And those two models, I think, really represent not only JDM, RLC, premium models, but the BRE phenomenon of the last decade. So those are number three. Number two, I mentioned that there were four major. JDM, Fast and Furious, Car Culture, and the fourth is the Gassers. And there's no more definitive Gasser than the Candy Striper. The 55 Bel Air is the Gasser of the Gasser, Gasser castings. Brendan Vitusky designed it. It was released in the basic range, and this was the first RLC release. We've seen a few cents. We've seen them in conventions. But the Candy Striper not only represents the Gasser phenomenon, like the BRE, very unique to Hot Wheels. You can do all kinds of fun things with Gassers. You can be at, you can be period correct for sure, but you can also just have all kinds of fun. And Hot Wheels collectors love the Gassers. We've seen other Gassers made and put into lines, but the 55 Bel Air, especially the Candy Striper and it's hot pink. Steve Vandervate did the deco. It's just the car that collectors want. We've seen prices obviously go skyrocket there. We've seen customizers do the Candy Striper deco on other de on other castings. But not only does it represent gassers, it is an American car. I think our muscle, cans, muscle car fans feel a little left out in this showcase, uh, even though that's not a muscle car. But gassers were a major thing. And the Candy Striper, more than any others, just looks-wise and unique looks-wise, has to be one of the top three definitive models of the year. Number one, you have to figure it out. And I don't know how you could argue against it being the most definitive model of the year. The only model that I would argue against the Datsun 510 wagon from 2013 Boulevard would be its Super Treasure Hunt counterpart. But I went with this one for a lot of reasons. Number one, the Datsun 510 wagon, along with the 83 Silverado and the 55 Gasser, were the most desired castings of any during this decade. I think the RWB might emerge over the next decade. But this one, not only being the definitive casting of the decade, but it also set the stage for car culture. This was June Amai's wagon. He built this. He made this casting based on his own wagon. June is easily the designer of the year, or the designer of the decade, like I said. And this might be his definitive casting, his definitive creation. And this 2013 wagon, while there's many factors that made it so popular, including the fact that it was very difficult to find, represents the realism that the collectors want represents the car culture meshing that collectors want and represents the JDM emergence that became so popular among collectors, but it set the stage for car culture. And I think that among all the other things make it the most definitive model of the last decade. You might argue with me. I feel like I'll always win it because I don't think there's any point whether I like the casting or not. And I do like it. That is the model of the decade by far hands down the most definitive model of the last 10 years now before i go there's one model that i do want to show because where do i think we're going well i think we're going into the age of the euro cars the e30 bmw we're going to see so many cool lamborghini porsche alfa romeo so many uh cool castings come from current and rally and all kinds of eras from, from European cars, and I think that's going to be, among many, many things, one of the definitive, definitive elements of the next decade. What will be the Datsun wagon of that decade? I think it's this one. I would say this was one of the significant releases, the Mercedes 190e Evo of this last decade, but I think it's going to be even more significant next decade. There's your 510 wagon, at least for the next few years, as we watch more and more cool Euro uh designs and Euro models come out from the Hot Wheels line. That's what I think. I could be very wrong. You could argue that point for sure. But those are the definitive models of the last decade. You guys tell me what you think. This was a fun video to do, especially a fun video to think through. A million other models that could be part of this, and I'm going to go with those. You guys tell me what you think. Comments down below. Thanks, everybody. Bye.